Hi there YouTube, it's me Broken Terrain coming to you with another crafting video. We're gonna make these bridges for our cliffs right after the drop. Got a lot to cover so let's get right to it. First we're gonna cut the sides of the bridge. I'm doing two inch by five inch pieces of XBS foam. You only need two for this bridge, uh, but you'll see me cut four, and that's because I'm going to sneak a second bridge in while I'm doing the first. Always make two, or more, because craft. Well look who figured out how to take some wonderful close-ups. Here we are with the two by five inch piece. You can see I have sketched an arch for my archway for the bridge and I'm just cutting out these tabs. They're a half inch in and I started with three quarter up but uh, eventually I will cut a full inch up um, but I'll show you later on in the video. Next we're going to cut the arch out. This is done by going in halfway and cutting the initial curve and then in the second pass uh, dipping your knife all the way through the XPS foam and very carefully following the curve. Hmm, we got to clean that cut up just a little bit. There we go. Close enough. Uh, now I want the sides of the bridge to have a little bit of a 3D effect. So here I am scoring along the other edge of the arch. And then I'm going to take the materials off from the, uh, the other side. And that's going to let the archway stones protrude just a, just a bit from the side piece. It's going to look really good when it's all done. carefully cut the foam away and then uh, try to even it out on the rest of the piece. And this will be where the rest of the bridge's brickwork resides. Fantastic. That's looking good. Now it's time to lay out my brickwork. My bricks are going to be a quarter of an inch by half inch. Here I am putting small ticks along the side of my XPS foam. And once I have those ticks on both sides, I just draw straight across. And this is going to ensure a straight brick placement. After your first set of bricks has been marked up, you're going to go back in the second. Remember to stagger those bricks to get a classic brick pattern. And here I am doing the same for the back. Uh, we won't see this side or the bottom side so much. So I've only bothered with the arch on the front facing sides of the bridge. Uh, make sure your brickwork goes all the way to the edges uh, and continues wrapping around. That way it'll look extra realistic. Once your brick pattern has been laid out, You'll go back in with an X-Acto knife and score out those grooves. Once 
Once those grooves have been scored out, you'll go back in with a pen and fit the pen tip into those grooves. This will separate the bricks and exaggerate the mortar lines. It's going to look great when it's painted. I should probably mention I should have tin foiled this piece before uh, I got my brickwork done, but I was just so excited to lay those bricks down that uh, I forgot. But don't worry, I do in fact go back and take care of the tin foil. Now I'll use an arch from a unsuccessful version of the bridge to lay out my bricks for the arch. Uh, they're just a quarter inch a piece. You uh, really don't need a template. Um, but because I had already failed this once, why not? Go back in on those edges with an X-Acto to soften them up and then follow my marks around to the other side. And just like we did for the bricks, we're going to go back in with our pen and separate all these lines to really exaggerate the spaces. Remember to get both sides. You want all the brick looking like brick. With the sides of the bridge all done, it's time to cut the bottom of our bridge. I'm going to make my bridge two and a half inches wide by five inches long. This is going to allow for plenty of play area on the bridge itself, allowing for two figurines to stand abreast and even some smaller wagons to fit down the bridge just fine. I'm using the dollar store ready board to do the bottom of my bridge. The first time working with this material and I really enjoyed it. The paper comes off easily and exposes the foam which takes texture amazing as you can see with the tin foil. Once I've rolled the tin foil for texture I'm gonna go in and trace out cobblestones. Apply even pressure with the pen and just keep drawing until you get the entire surface. I tell you, after a couple of these, my hands were sore. Don't worry about taking breaks now and then. Getting close to assembly time. Just looking over my pieces and cleaning up any hard corners that I forgot or missed. And now I'm dry fitting the pieces together. I had originally planned on supporting the middle piece with some toothpicks, but uh, that experiment was an absolute failure. So I'm just going to hot glue the, the path of the bridge to the sides and create a couple of supports underneath on the fly. Here we see a extra chunk of XBS foam. I'm going to measure two and a half wide. And then just cut it uh, to size for about the, uh, about the width of two bricks tall. And I'm going to real quickly go in with a knife to score out a brick pattern. And then go back in with the pen just so that these supports Although they won't be viewed often, as they will be on the bottom of the bridge, you still want them to have a little bit of that look and texture. There we go. Now that the support has quickly been turned into brick, we're going to hot glue it along the bottom. And this is just going to strengthen the bridge up so that our figurines don't fall through and our anxious players don't snap a hole in our terrain. And a second support for the other side. 
There we go. And finally, we're going to hot glue the other half of the bridge. Uh, I'm excited to get a first look. Aren't you? Fantastic. Everything fit together just right. But we're not finished yet. Let's make the, uh, the top of the bridge look a little more decorative. I'm going to cut out some stone capping for our brickwork. Oh, and don't forget the tin foil. Give a texture to any surface you missed. And even if you didn't miss a surface, it doesn't hurt to go back in with that tin foil. More texture is always good. Now with a little hot glue, we'll put these brick caps in place. First one, and then the other. Take your time and center it so that it looks just right. Fantastic. Just making sure everything looks straight and admiring my own handiwork. Boy, I'm getting excited for these bridges. Mm, but these caps are a little boring. So grab your ruler and let's mark them off in one inch increments. This is going to make them look a lot better and it's also going to provide a rudimentary grid on the bridge. This is going to help with play. That's right, and a healthy dose of tin foil. Never hurt anyone. Get that texture in. And once the texture is applied, we're going to go back in and score those lines with a knife, and then go back in with our pen and create some interesting grout lines. This stuff is just going to look amazing when painted. When you're doing this, don't forget the edges. It's important to make sure those stone slabs carry over to the sides as well. It really adds to the realism of the piece. Fantastic. And because we're working with foam, it's time to cover it in our Black Magic Base Coat. 50% black acrylic paint and 50% matte Mod Podge. This is going to uh, apply a black base coat and the Mod Podge is going to stiffen, strengthen, and protect the foam. It's a very vital step when working with foam. Uh, it is rather boring to watch though, so I've sped the footage up. Um, you're welcome. And we'll get to the fun stuff just after. Here we see the piece all base coated up. And now it's time to start painting. I'm going to paint the lighter brick with a granite gray. This includes the cobblestone areas, the brickwork caps, and the arches themselves. I try to get only the areas I want painted, but because it's the first color, I'm not too worried about a clean paint. And I just want to make sure the surfaces I want colored are covered well. Don't forget, 
the bottom of the arches. Then I'm going to go back in with a very thin detail oriented brush and get the tops of the arch stones. With the same brush, I'm going to get the underhangs of the caps for the brickwork. Trying to be as careful as I can not to spread the color to other areas. I love putting paint down on a project that really starts to come alive at this point. With our granite gray done, it's time to bring out our elephant gray, which is a darker gray. And with the same detailed brush, I'm going to go back in near the edges of the granite gray stone and color our darker elephant gray. I like the contrasting grays, and I'm going to try and maintain those throughout the paint job. This will give the, the bridge uh, a nice look and emphasize all the detail work that we put into it. And I'm just going around the piece, carefully painting on that first little bit of elephant gray around those granite gray areas. Uh, I'd hate to have to repaint just because I uh, got a little crazy with the brush. Once detailing by the edges is done, I'll get a bigger brush and apply the elephant gray more liberally, trying to get all the nooks and crannies painted up as best as possible. But don't worry if you can't get into all of them. That's what that black magic base coat was for. With the elephant gray, I'm going to get the sides of the brickwork and I'm going to bomb the underside of it with uh, with the elephant gray. I'm not too worried about a fancy paint job underneath. The only people who are gonna see that are minis. And uh, the minis don't talk. At least I don't think they do. There we are. Now that we're all coated in our elephant and granite grays, it's time to hit it with a wash. I'm going to use my homemade black wash with that pearlescence from before and it's going to add a nice glitter and mineral effect to my stonework. Just drip it on the piece and paint it in liberally. And you can already see the definition that the wash gives. They call it talent in a bottle and uh, it certainly is. You can see how it's sinking in between all those cobblestones and it's going to make the top part of the bridge look fantastic. And even our rushed brickwork looks amazing with a wash on it. Here's a great shot of the wash being applied to the brickwork again. It looks fantastic.
Now we're uh, applying the wash to the upper and inner parts of the bridge. And I just can't get enough of it. And every time you put it down, it just emphasizes all that texture and all the line work that we've done. Don't forget to brush all of it with the wash. Don't miss a bit. Looking good. Now I've got a brown wash. Again, another homemade recipe. Touch of brown ink, a little of black, mostly water, just a bit of soap to help it, help it flow. And we're gonna put it down on the cobbles. We got a nice muddy brown cobbled walkway. Boy, that looks good. on that wash and leave it on there nice and thick so we have a nice dirty walkway looks good with the first wash done I'm just gonna pick the bridge up and show it off just a little bit you see that pearlescence in that brick I love it looks like real brick all right time to get a dry brush going I'm going to go back to my granite gray and get a little bit out on the plate for me. To dry brush, you simply load your brush with the paint color and using something like a paper towel, you're going to brush off as much of that extra paint as you can, but just the bristles have a light amount of paint. Then you can take that brush and gently brush it over the raised surfaces of your piece. These nice close-ups are going to show you how only the raised parts of the brick are actually getting that paint. This is where all that tin foil, all that line work really pays off. That dry brushing really just makes all your details pop. I'm going to hit all the brickwork up with the granite gray. A smarter crafter might have painted some of these pieces before he assembled the bridge. I am not one of those smarter crafters. I did it the hard way. Next we're going to go in with Apple Barrel's Vanilla Ice Cream. And we're going to dry brush all the lighter stone with that color. This is going to keep the separation of colors. So that the stones look darker than the arch and hand railing stones. The look is subtle, but uh, that's why I appreciate these close-ups. You'll still be able to see the differences, particularly on the edges and raised surfaces. I'm taking special care not to hit the brickwork with the vanilla as I want my two colors to stay defined and separate but complementary.
Don't forget those archway stones. Gotta keep those popping too. Once you've finished your dry brushing, it's time to apply some more washes. I'm laying another coat of brown wash on the cobblestones. It just didn't darken the way I wanted it to. So when in doubt, apply more paint and apply more wash. With the washes dried, I wanted to try a new technique. I wanted to add a muddy moss to this bridge. So I decided to come up with my own concoction. A little touch of PVA white glue, a tiny bit of Mississippi mud paint, and a bit of that grass flock. Well, maybe a little more grass flock. And I mixed it all up into a muddy granular paste. Once I liked the consistency, I took a small detailing paintbrush and started to apply the concoction in the cracks of the bridge and anywhere I thought mud and moss and dirt might settle. Uh, this was a first for me and I found it a bit frustrating at first, uh, trying to get everything to sit just right, but uh, a little a little bit into the project, I really started to enjoy it. And boy, the it looked amazing, as you'll see in some of these wonderful close-up shots. Uh, at one point, the detail brush just wasn't doing it, and I actually turned to my good old fingers, uh, just grabbing heaps of the stuff and squishing it into place. I really enjoyed this step, and I found the look it was adding to the bridge very pleasing. I had to go back and make more of my muddy, mossy, dirt paint concoction, and this time I ended up going a little more green with it, and a little less brown. I liked that look better, and ultimately went back in over the stuff I had already done to, uh, to green it up a bit. I started applying it to the arches where dirt, mud, and muck might settle and moss might grow. I was really getting excited for these pieces of terrain while doing this step. After a while, I got into my groove with this step, and uh, I might have overdid it, but um, I still really love the way they came out. Finally, I really wanted to muck up those cobblestones, so I thought I would take my dirty, grimy mixture and I would smear it across the roads. Uh, for one, that Mississippi mud color would get all over those cobblestones and pathways. And then that uh, the nasty, grouty mixed uh, flock would hang all over the cobbles and look like dirt and mud from passing boots and horse hooves. Once the grime dried, uh, it was time to go back in with a 50-50 mix of white PVA glue and water. 
and just gently dab and lock everything into place. At this point, I was chomping at the bit to play with these things, so letting the glue dry was not easy. Gotta make sure you get all of it. Don't want any of that uh, muddy flock popping off during play. How embarrassing that would be. After the glue had dried, I decided I wanted to go back in with some washes. So I used a dark green to add some color to where the moss was and the surrounding brick. I like this effect so much that I decided to use the green wash for the cobblestone road part of the bridge. I put a healthy amount on and then just dabbed it in. I really was going for a depth of brown and green color for the cobblestone path. Then with a the brown wash, I just went back in and just dirtied up the brick a bit. Focusing uh, on the mossy and muddy areas first, and then just ultimately spreading a light brown wash across all of the darker brick, trying to leave the, the two lighter brick areas uncovered by the wash. This was a good decision. It was really making the brick pop just a little bit more. And while I was at it, more brown wash for the cobbles. I really wanted to darken this path up. Once the wash is dried, I took them outside and hit them with a Rust-Oleum clear matte coat. And this will protect them against fingerprints and chips and smudges. And now we get to see them in all their glory. I've created a scene here with my cliffs that I did in last video. Check this out. Your players will freak when they see this scene play out on the table. Here we see a demon lord who's called forth the very shadows to do his bidding and attack our heroes. Be careful, adventurers, and defeat that evil. And I've hidden a surprise for our heroes. Did you see it? That's right, there was the demon's treasure being hidden in the cliffs. If you found it, type treasure in the comments. <laughs> Give me a like, subscribe, and hey, how about hitting those notifications so that you get all my future videos. Uh, until then, have a great evening and craft on.